and shall help us, Jesus. Here yeah, Nehemiah goes, and the people are confronted with the enemies of God. He realizes that they have begun again to build on the foundation. He realizes that they have started again to bring back to pass the glory that was lost under Nebuchadnezzar's pillage of the country. But here he begins to see uh, that though the folk have stopped, uh, that's Malachi, Zachariah, uh, and those that begin to preach to the people, uh, you have begun a good work, uh, but you have allowed occasion to stop you. Uh, here the Bible says, uh, Nehemiah must learn how to differentiate uh, between the enemy that's coming in, uh, the work that is going on, and the fight that we must pick up. Uh, he realizes as he's heard uh, that the wall is torn down. Uh, and God has put it in his spirit. The Bible said he arrives and he feels, observes that it's just as he has been told. Well, he realizes that the people have been scattered from building on the foundation because the wall is a protection. The wall provided security. The wall provided peace of mind, uh, and the wall provided refuge. Uh, this particular portion of the scripture uh, is important in kingdom building uh, because sometimes uh, we must realize what God is uh, doing in our lives. Uh, sometimes we must stop and ask the Lord, uh, how the wall been broken down. Uh, sometimes the rebuilding of the temple, uh, it has to stop for a while. Uh, and we must put our hands to the work uh, and start building a wall of protection. Uh, here, Nehemiah saw uh, how important it was to build this wall. Uh, he would not let nothing stop him. Uh, though they were coming from around the country he was in. Uh, they were strangers in the land. Uh, the kingdom did not belong to them. Uh, that's why every Christian must realize uh, that when you find the enemy has come into your life, uh, what he has does not belong to you. Uh, but you must learn how, uh, if you can't continue building the temple, uh, just pray like Nehemiah to my God uh, and ask the Lord to give you strength uh, that you must build the wall to secure your mind. Uh, you must build the wall to protect your spirit. Uh, you must build the wall uh, so that you can have the peace of God. Uh, you must build the wall uh, because the writer said uh, the name of the the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it and is saved. You must realize that Nehemiah, he knew that the wall had to be built. It was in tumultuous times. Fear had a grip the people, but I believe he had the same mind of Paul when he talked to his protege and said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, of intimidation, but of love and of power and of a mind that stayed on him. Touch somebody and say, I see my help coming. You need the help, not me. We all need the help in our life. But we must be able to see God coming in. The Bible says that they came to seek, to kill, destroy. They came to kill the work of God. But 
But when God has anointed you, when God has appointed you, it may look like the work has stopped, but all oh, you must realize, like Isaiah said, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and God has anointed me to perform the work of God. Here, Nehemiah said, I can't let it stop. He had to build up the folk. And so he heard of the plot that the enemy had. See, that's one thing about the enemy. He talks too much. That's why when God talks to you, you shouldn't open your mouth all the time. But you gotta be like Mary. And she pondered those things in her heart. She said, I can't let nobody know how I feel. See, because sometimes you give it away. You're like Syria. She heard it and she laughs and God will challenge you but if you keep it in your heart and say Lord make me to know my end and the measure of my days how many know God will take you through and so Nehemiah he just held it within he went to the wall by night you cannot always take family with you you take family with you you can't take friends you can't even take saints you gotta learn how to go to the place alone you gotta learn how sometimes how God gets you there it's also not the thing to go there for he took his beast there but when he got there he got down off of the beast he left everything behind when you get to the place where God's talking to you don't take nothing with you just tell the Lord I'm coming alone Lord it's me and it's me only standing in the need of prayer don't take nobody don't ask for no amens don't ask for no encouragement but realize that the Lord is your strength. Clap your hands. Shout hallelujah. He takes his horse there, but later he now has to strengthen the people. But he has strength. He's a praying man. Don't you remember like Jesus? He would go aside and pray. He would go to the mountains and pray. Let me tell you when you stop praying those that are around you they go want to pray also maybe that's why the church not praying we don't have folk coming to prayer meeting but the disciples ask him they said teach us how to pray the folk begin to learn how to call on God they may learn how to seek the Lord while he may be found and call on him while he's near. I heard Nehemiah tell him, he said, We've heard the strategy of the enemy. Remember, Paul said, We are not ignorant of his strategies. And that Greek word for device is strategies. He's not coming at you with one thing, but he has a succession of things. He trying to pull you down, but you have to learn how to hold on to God. You must learn how to stay, as the old saints used to say, I'm going to stay right under the blood. You got to learn how to call on his name. And the Bible said, when he learned it, he learned, he knew how to set the folk in motion. That's why, as a leader, we got to always seek God. Sometimes you feel depressed. Sometimes you feel despondent. But you must learn how to take it to the Lord in prayer. That's why I believe the 
God of God say, I go to the God the Lord. What we do is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear. It's not my lover Lord whispering sweet nothings. It's not my friend telling me everything is gonna be alright. But it's a word from God, and His word brings faith, and faith causes me to walk with God, and faith allows me to see the impossible. Clap your hands, shout hallelujah. He tells us that Nehemiah is ready. He began to pull the people together. It takes something to pull folk together. Remember Moses coming out of Egypt. The Bible said, and he harnessed the folk together. In other words, he had to look among them and find folk that were capable of leading their family. Everybody in your family is not capable of leading the family. But remember, God said, unto him. He said let them choose out among them the one that's in their group that is able to lead them. You have to learn how to be honest. You may be the best looking one in the family. You may be the talented one but you may not be the anointed one. Touch somebody and say I heard that. Listen, it takes anointing. It doesn't take looks. It takes anointing. It's not education. It takes anointing, not talent, to be able to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Clap your hands. Shout hallelujah. I'm almost finished. So Nehemiah, he pulls them together and he began to tell them everybody cannot work at the same time. We got to learn how to work this work. That's what leaders have to do. Folks don't see it that way. They say, no, everybody has to do the same thing. Everybody has to praise him because the church is in praise service. But there comes the time when you got to tell somebody, I need you to go into the prayer room while the service is going on. You got to get out back because I sense that the devil's trying to come in and it look like the praise service. It just cannot get through. But all of a sudden, a praise erupts and folk want to know what happened. Well, while you were struggling, somebody had your back. They were fighting in the heavenlies, 